One thing I always look for is the perfect dollop. I can't say my dolloping skills are the best, but some of the best food stylists in the world pride themselves on the perfect dollop. Hi, I'm Donald and welcome to the channel. I've been creating easy meals that make your life a little bit easier in the kitchen for over 10 years now. But this channel is all about a little slice of our family life and home cooking. I'll be showing you how to get the most out of your kitchen to next level your dishes for maximum flavor. So stick around, hit that subscribe button and let's get cooking. Now in my kitchen, I tend to keep things quite simple. Chopping board, knife, and maybe a frying pan. But sometimes I do bring a kitchen gadget into my world. And lately I've been doing a lot of slow cooking. So I have a slow cooker and I wanna show you one of my favorite recipes, which we've adapted for the slow cooker to make your life a little bit easier. This is my slow cooker butter chicken that is incredibly easy to do. Now with a lot of these slow cookers, they do have a browning function, but I still kind of rely on a frying pan to get the best browning that will really introduce a lot of flavor to these slow cooked dishes. So we're gonna use it, but I wanna hack our slow cooker a little bit by browning off our onions and getting our spices full of flavor with a lot of heat on the frying pan before we get into the slow cooker. So we have a little chopping to do. I have some garlic, I have some ginger, and I have some onion. And in terms of spices, we're keeping it quite simple here. I've got a combination of garam masala, some cumin, a little bit of cardamom, and some coriander. The great thing about this sort of recipe is that you can do a lot of adapting. If you don't have these exact ingredients, really I encourage you to use what you have and just kind of get a sense of what flavors you're using. You probably won't go too far wrong if you don't follow it to the T. Right, we've got some chopping to do. Onion, garlic, and ginger. So I've got the garlic going in with the onions. I also wanna add in some ginger, and the ginger here is gonna go a long way to making the flavor of this beautiful butter chicken really come alive. So I wanna grate this up really nice and finely with a microplane. Now, a little tip that I've picked up in recent years with ginger is that everyone talks about peeling it with a teaspoon and peeling it really nice and finely. If this is a nice, clean piece of ginger and you've given it a wash, you can grate the skin in with the pulp and it'll still taste wonderful. So don't bother peeling, just get grating. And I would say it is worth using one of these graters because rather than chopping it up when, gar when ginger is quite fibrous, you're gonna get that stringiness in your dish. By grating it up nice and finely like this, you're getting the pulp of it and you're getting all that aromatic all in one bite, which is exactly what we're after. So ginger goes in and now we're gonna fry this off over at the pan. So this is butter chicken, so I think it is essential that we, uh, we add a little bit of butter. I'm gonna add more to the pan, but I'm just gonna take off a knob of butter. Okay, a little bit of butter straight in the pan, and we're gonna let that fry off. I always tend to add just a touch of oil, and the reason being just because butter has a tendency to kind of burn, it has a, a lower smoke point than oil, so straight in with a little splodge of oil, all that butter goes in, and we're gonna get our onions and our ginger and our garlic in there too. And always at this early point in the cooking time, especially with onions, a good seasoning of sea salt and black pepper. Now I'm gonna leave these onions just to soften down. And as they soften down, we need to talk about spices because we have a little bit of a combination here. And the idea alongside like the hacking moment of frying off our onions first in a frying pan, we're also gonna fry off our spices because a lot of these spices are, they're basically sitting in your store cupboards and you wanna bring them alive. And to do that, they need heat. They need heat and a little bit of fat. And the fat we have with the butter and the onions and all the good things that are happening in the pan, this is gonna be like the flavor bomb explosion that brings the rest of this slow cooked dish to life. So our onions are now in a good place. They soften down ever so slightly. So I'm gonna grab up our spices. I actually have just the dregs of the coriander going in here. So I'm gonna pop that last bit in. Mm, it's that sort of lemony scented sweet spice that it gives. Then we're gonna add, I love when I get these jars where I don't, the teaspoon doesn't actually fit in, so we're gonna eyeball it. Uh, it's about a teaspoon or so of cardamom going in. Cumin is probably one of my favorite ingredients in here, so a good sprinkle of that goes in. And I suppose the one that you use the most of is the garam masala. Now, normally when it comes to slow cooker dishes, people just plonk all the ingredients in the slow cooker. Doing this is gonna bring the electricity of these ingredients alive. So adding that bit of heat is gonna really make the difference here. So pop in, have a look, and let's toast up these spices. Right, the spices literally need only about a minute or so, even less, just to bring them alive. And because they're kind of stuck at the bottom, there's a trick to fix that. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of water and we're kind of gonna deglaze the pan somewhat. I don't know if it's, that's the official term, but basically the water is gonna help us kind of make sure that we get all the spices into the onions. 
Okay, so this is now looking good. We've scraped the majority of the spices off the bottom of the pan. We're gonna turn off the heat. And we're gonna transfer this into the slow cooker. So literally take them and just pop them straight into the slow cooker. Not the most pleasant of looking things, but I promise you, it's full of flavor. Right, we've got every last little bit of it. And I've told you a million times how much flavor that's gonna give. So do, <laughs> do bother with that little step. It'll make a world of difference. Right, other ingredients. We have some chicken. So I've got chicken thighs here. Um, you can use skinless and bone-in ones, but for simplicity and ease of serving, I'm just gonna use the boneless, skinless type. Um, it actually works really well with the bone-in if you have bone-in chicken thighs, so feel free to use them. Anything that has the bone-in slow cooks beautifully, so use them if you have them. Uh, other ingredients, coconut milk, a little bit of tomato passata or tomato puree. Um, in Ireland, we do not call it tomato puree. This is tomato passata, um, so we're gonna use that. Now, I should mention, I'm using coconut milk here rather than the traditional ingredient, which is cream. I've started enjoying this a little bit better, knowing that I've kind of got a sort of a lighter butter chicken and also the fact that it has a sort of exotic flavor as well. So you could use cream if you want, but I feel like the coconut milk works really well in this recipe. So that's it, chicken, passata, coconut milk, all I need is a tin opener, and then we're gonna assemble this in the slow cooker and get it cooking. Oh, and we nearly forgot a key ingredient. I mean, it is butter chicken, you gotta add the butter. So uh, let's take the lid off this. And I would suggest that if you're making this, do it with the full fat coconut milk. The light coconut milk doesn't give you a sort of a, as rich and creamy finish to it. So if you'll notice when you take your lid off the coconut milk, it's quite a solid mix and that's all the cream on top. So we're gonna loosen that out with a spoon and you'll notice that if you just kind of spoon that off, which is thick and luscious and gorgeous, underneath there is that sort of milk so we're gonna pour that straight in and basically the whole lot goes in, but I just wanted to show you what I'm talking about. Right, coconut milk in, a little bit of the tomato passata and the beauty of this is that all the work has been done for you. You've got kind of, it's gone the extra mile than a tin of chopped tomatoes. It's strained, it's smooth and it looks really gorgeous. So I do like this as a little cheat ingredient in the kitchen. Uh, okay, we're gonna give it a fairly generous knob of butter as well. I like the idea of this melding together with the coconut milk and the tomato and all those gorgeous things. This, I know you're reaching in here to see something beautiful, but it does not look beautiful. <laughs> you kind of have to wait until it cooks out. I mean, the thing with slow cooker meals is that it doesn't exactly look pretty until the end where you can kind of garnish it and add it to rice or things like this. So you kind of do have to have a little bit of faith and knowledge that essentially this will end up in something that's flavorful, tender, and gorgeous. Okay, there, there are key ingredients. And the last one, of course, is the chicken. So it's not any more glamorous than this. You're just gonna place those chicken thighs straight into the slow cooker. Now, before we finish up and before we put the lid on, a last seasoning of some salt and pepper. Really important you season at this point. It's your last moment to get it in there before this slow cooks. So a good, generous pinch of black pepper will go a long way. And get in there and give it a good stir up. Okay, this is where it needs to be. So. What I would say is at this point, if you did want to add in something to bulk this out, I actually normally add potatoes in here. So baby potatoes sliced in half, pop them in and they'll cook out at a similar enough time as the chicken so that you'll get left with chicken and potatoes all in one go. Now that's if you're gonna do this as a sort of one pot version that you can bring straight to the table. I normally serve it with some quinoa or some pearl barley or even some rice if you have some. Now the beauty of these slow cookers is that you can cook them on high for about four hours or you can cook them on low for about six hours. But with a lot of them, they have a keep warm function, which means that as soon as they're done cooking, they stop with the heat and they allow them to keep warm and it's basically ready for as soon as you're ready to sit down for dinner. So I'm gonna cook this on high for about four hours. They have so many different functions. You can steam, you can do yogurt, you can rise bread, you can do pasta. But to be honest, I normally just make rice and I do dishes like this, so it doesn't get too exciting. Four hours on the clock, let's click start. So our butter chicken has had the time to cook out. It's cooked low and slow for about four hours. The liquid's reduced a little bit and now we should be in a very, very good place. Hello, come in and have a look at this. This is exactly where we need to be and it's where I want to be. So we're gonna serve this up. I need a slightly smaller ladle. The chicken at this point now, I mean, look at it. It's beautifully tender. It should almost be falling apart. You can see some of that has actually fallen apart and it's almost shredding itself. So at this point now, we're gonna serve it up and what I wanna prove to you is that this is your core recipe and then you can build on it. So I have some stuff from the fridge that I've done a bit of meal prep on. I actually heated up some pearl barley. This I normally meal prep, it's about 
two cups of water, one cup of pearl barley, and you boil it until the grains are nice and tender. It kind of takes the place of rice if you don't have rice, or you could use quinoa here. We're gonna pop all our pearl barley straight in there, leaving a little bit of space for the chicken on the side. I have some creme fraiche, which I'm just gonna dollop on top. I want that little bit of richness. I have some coriander. Um, I also have uh, some chickpeas, which I'm gonna add. Essentially, what you're getting left with is a meal that has loads of other components, but this is your core element. The butter chicken is what rings through and brings the flavor to this entire dish. So, we'll serve up that butter chicken. Hello. You could do this easily with chicken thighs on the bone. It would work beautifully. There's no faffing about with a knife and fork. You could almost eat this with a spoon. It's so tender. We're gonna pop on some chickpeas on top. And this is where, you know, like, Butter chicken straight out of the pot looks lovely, but you know, emphasizing the extra elements that you have just will change how your dish looks. So a little bit of chickpeas on top, nice little bit of texture. Uh, we're gonna add some of those little coriander leaves just in over the top. And then I want a dollop of some creme fraiche. I just think it kind of adds a nice coolness and a creaminess to the top of this butter chicken. So grab up a spoon and a little dollop of creme fraiche goes a long way. My mum always added creme fraiche to things and I always kind of think of her when I do it because it's that last little hit that just makes the difference. If there is that little horrible liquid on the top, you can just pour it off or you can do what I do, which is just mix it through until you have a, a nice kind of smooth consistency. And one thing, like I've done quite a few cookbooks and TV shows and stuff like that. And one thing I always look for is the perfect dollop. This is like an acquired art and some of the best food stylists in the world. I can't say my dolloping skills are the best, but some of the best food stylists in the world pride themselves on the perfect dollop. And it does take a little bit of stirring and then you kind of like tease the cream and then you kind of do a little dollop. Let's see if we can, we can do a little fancy dollop on top. It's all about like the, I need a bit more. It's all about the little kind of swirl. I don't know if that's the perfect dollop, but it's a good try. <laughs> uh, and there you go, like a very simple dish using that beautiful butter chicken, chickpeas, pearl barley, good things are happening right now. And all that's left to do is tuck in and try it. This is the best moment of making all the food is getting to eat all the food. So let's dive in and see what we're dealing with here. That chicken should be, yeah, that's exactly what we're after. Literally just falling, falling apart. And a really luscious sauce as well. I just wanted a bite of the chicken first. Mm. I have to say, normally when I cook in the slow cooker, which I didn't do right now, is I check the seasoning before I, I plate it up. But actually, the flavor is fantastic here. It could do with a tiny pinch of salt, but with the creme fraiche there, the chickpeas, the coriander, and all that pearl barley, you have got a meal that is ready to rock. And the beauty of it is, all the work happens in the slow cooker. If you don't have one of these, you don't have to go out and buy one. You can still make this recipe in like a Dutch oven or a casserole. It is up to you. And you could put it in the oven and slowly cook it away or pop it on the hob and let it cook away there. So the recipe will work just as well. So if you want all the details, as always, I'll leave them in the description box below. Please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to get notifications as soon as these recipes arrive. And that's it. Dinner is ready to serve. So I'm off to tuck in and enjoy.